Good afternoon again. I don't say good evening, I say good afternoon. I'm always in the afternoon. I like sleeping and wake up late, especially this time. Uh, now, I promised you the other day that our next tutorial will be on sextants. It's another device that is used by navigators. So Lily, it is about getting the position of a ship and then also you'll find that we'll be going back to our um, angles once more. That's why I said you must know your geometry. You must be able to measure. So we're going back to our angles again but now the device we're using will be a sextant. X sextant was used in the olden days. It's a very old device that was good then and it's still good now. Most of the ship captains I have consulted, they like a sextant. Like they loved it long ago. So it's still on the cards. They still use it. So the role of the sextant really will be to determine the ship position also like other devices but it's using its own own methods uh, it is used at sea it is used even if there are no landmarks for instance you don't see any island you don't see any lighthouse so you just use it as a sextant it will tell you the distance, it will tell you the position. So that is uh, the role of the sextant. Now, they measure the distance from uh, certain planets, from a planet, like for instance a, a sun, or a moon, or a star. They, that's what they do. They measure that distance, and that distance will always be in degrees, and angles or angles in degrees you know that the angles are measured in degrees so that is the difference how it works how does a sextant work what are you going to do when you get to a vessel when you're using or what what are you going to achieve out of it what are you going to do when you get to a vessel as a navigator remember you're going to be navigators we have chosen to be navigators. So they will measure, sextants will measure the altitudes. Altitudes of what? Altitudes of that celestial body. You want, let's say a moon, for instance, you are here as a ship. This is your fixed point where you are. But you want now an altitude of that celestial body, that moon then you are going to use a sextant and then the altitude of that moon you are looking at it from your point but that altitude it will be from the horizon you see from the horizon to the body or to the, the, to the celestial body now what is the horizon by the way because we can know that we are going to measure from the horizon to the altitude from the horizon we see to the moon. But what is a horizon? In simpler terms, a horizon is just uh, the, the, the distance uh, to where you don't see beyond. That's it. Or that line you see where you cannot see beyond is called the horizon so now this angle you want you want the angle from that horizon to the celestial body that is the moon if you choose a moon or the sun if you choose a sun or any star you want to 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 to, to use so now so bear in mind bear in mind you use the visible horizon right visible horizon so the angle of the planet you want to measure it must be from the visible horizon to the planet 
itself. Then you use a sextant. Bear in mind, you are not using anything else or your eyes or what to distant or a tape measure. If you are not tape measures, just to fix your sextant and your sextant is pointing towards the direction you want and then it will display the angle by itself. I told you that these days everything is automatic. We use technology. Um, sextants, they measure those angles. Um, they will measure uh, in vertical, in horizontal, or oblique, right? Now, when you say, oh, I talked about the horizontals and, and vertical lines, but there's also now oblique, we are adding. Oblique means it's neither parallel or perpendicular. It is just sloping then you are going to measure an angle out of that. So, so the planes, these are the planes. The plane might be horizontal the, or vertical or oblique. I said vertical, as you know, horizontal, as you know, oblique is sloping. That's it. So that's what the, the, the sextant can measure and give you good results. So let's define the sextant let me give you a proper definition of a sextant a marine sextant is a double reflection instrument used for measuring angles in the same plane the marine sextant is a double reflection instrument used to measure angles in the same plane. That is a marine sextant. Now, you are a navigator. You are going to, 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 to conduct these measurements I'm talking about using a technology. A technology or a device called a sextant. Now, I said you will have to measure the altitude of that celestial body uh, in, the, in the form of an angle. You'll measure the angle of that celestial body above the visible horizon. That is the angle you want. I think you will understand one another. And then the sextant, inside it, it has got an arc. And then this arc is graduated. When I say it's graduated, I mean it is numbered. There are numbers there, and those numbers are in degrees. They are the ones that are going to display your angle. So this arc is graduated from 0 to 120 degrees. That's what it does. Also, it is graduated on the left from 120 back now to 0 again. That's what you are getting. But it is said that sometimes those graduations could be a little bit more than 120. It has an arc that is graduated in degrees from right to left and starting from 0 to 120. And then it will sometimes be more than 120, maybe 125 or 124, something like that, but it's least little more than that. To the right of zero on the arc is graduated from zero and then five degrees onwards, which means that now it will be onward up to that 120. And then the axis, the arc axis you get out of that is called off arc. Remember, the off arc is on the right. The on the arc is on the left. So, having said that, that is the sextant. So, everybody knows what the role of the sextant is going to show you exactly the angle. It show you the distance in the form of the angle using a sextant. So, the sextant is graduated in degrees. And also the angle, the angle between the visible horizon and the celestial body you are measuring. Then we will 
go to another device, a device we call the radio direction finder. Immediately you say radio now, you must know that that one is an automatic direction finder. It finds direction by itself. It's called radio direction finder. You will find the radio direction finder in both the aircrafts and the, the ship. So the aircraft, if everybody knows that, is an aeroplane. So you'll find a radio direction finder there and also on the ship itself. This radio direction finder automatically and continuously display relative bearings. You remember yesterday we defined a relative bearing as an angle between the ship forward direction and the location of another object. That is a relative bearing. Now, this radio direction finder is capable of automatically and continuously display relative bearings by itself. You are not going to struggle. Now, relative bearings will be from the ship or the aircraft to a suitable radio station. That is the relative uh, 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 bearing they will be capturing. That is the radio direction finder. Um, the act of doing that, when you are measuring this direction using the radio direction finder, is called the direction finding or radio direction finding. It does that by itself once more. And it is suitable for measuring relative bearings from the aircraft or the ship. That's right. And then these relative, uh, relative bearings will be measured from the ship to a suitable radio station. You must understand that. We have already said it. Now, when you are using this radio direction finder, you must have two or more measurements from different locations. So remember, when we talked before in the previous chapters, we say when you have at least some information about other objects, it's very easy to locate other, another object, the one you want. So you have these two or more measurements from different locations. And then this location must be an unknown location or an unknown transmitter. Then this radio direction finder will assist you there also. You want what you don't know when you know two measurements. It will assist you to get this unknown transmitter you want to see. That's what it does. Or alternatively, it does the reverse. Really, you get two or more measurements from a known now transmitter. Right. From a known transmitter, then you want to know what you get, what you don't know. It will assist. Even if you want to, to locate a vehicle, anything, in a small aircraft. At sea, you will be able to locate it when you know those uh, uh, trans two locations that are the measurements of two, to those two uh, uh, locations or those two transmitters. Then you'll be able to locate a small aircraft you want to locate. So it does that. Then let's pass to echo sounder. An echo sounder is. It measures depth, really, the depth of water. Now, like, like you want to know up to where, where does the water end there in the seabed? So it's the echo sounder that will give you that information, the depth of water. And also, it will also give you the soundings around there or anything that is around there you, you need to see underneath the water. These big vessels must carry 
the echo sounders all the time they are moving because it's not about knowing where you are going to and then re remember the ship as it goes down is it's big down you you see only the part of the deck and up and, and all the bridge there you that's what you see but uh, below the water line down you don't know how far the ship goes how far the keel goes you don't know so the echo sounder is helping in those things so that once you know above you must know also underneath so that is the role of the echo sounder one other thing i can say uh, this is out of me really as a geography uh, uh, student i did geography at university as well i majored in geography i started with geography i did the oceanographies before i came to this maritime now i know that at sea there are currents right there are currents that are vertical there are currents that are horizontal so once you see currents on top of water you know, the, uh, the, the tides and all those things or they feel them or whatever but they must not they might not be aware of what is happening on, on underneath maybe there is a strong current that can serve the ship to another direction uh, we talked about the leeway if you remember and leeward so we talked about those things so they must be very very careful so this echo sounder will help on those things IMO is a UN specialized agency that is dealing with ships especially their safety security and marine environment protection or pollution control so it is an organization that is based in London where all the member states of the IMO will go and develop regulations. So it is this IMO that is approving the equipments that are used in big vessels. So it has approved an echo sounder called E250. So you'll find that E250 in big vessels. Not unless now the regulations have changed. But the last time I remember, IMO had recommended the E250, which is equipped with TFT, LDC, with day and night screen. Now, that uh, TFT LDC is a kind of an echo sounder. That is a color, really. It's not a black and white. So it's going to show you everything as is. So it has got a day and night screen. So it will display instantly all vital information you need. Any information, I have already said that, it will display it instantly. And then it, it is continuous. It doesn't stop. And it will just measure that depth. And also it will record the sounding it finds underneath. So that's what it does. Then that navigation data uh, of that echo sounding, it will be kept in its memory. It will always be found there. Now the IMO is in insisted that this echo sounder must be kept and the right echo sounder or right equipment and an equipment that is performing according to the international standards or according to the standards as set by the IMO committees those people who develop and then IMO approves so IMO wants those standards to be kept kept or exceeded for that matter because other countries can do well really. So you, you are either on those standards or you exceed those standards as far as that echo sounder is concerned. You don't just buy any kind of echo sounder in the market. It doesn't work like that. Now, this was approved by the assembly. 
all the regulations and everything IMO does is approved by the assembly of the IMO. IMO is working with two governing bodies, the assembly and the council. The council ensures that everything is done, conventions are developed and everything and it approves, but the approval that doesn't remain with the council, it will be presented to the last body, the assembly. The assembly consists of heads of governments. It's them who approve any of these regulations by the IMO, including the echo sounder we are talking about. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I would not be long today, but seemingly I am long, 25 minutes. So uh, please uh, keep going, keep reading as I talk. And then don't forget to subscribe. I'm saying this and I am I'm insisting. Subscribe so that you get any video because if you don't click that red subscribe, it means you won't get a video that is coming sometimes. Whereas if you subscribe, when you get to your computer or your phone, you'll find my video waiting for you. You can miss it if you don't sus subscribe. So subscribe those who have the internet. I'm worried about those who don't have in internet. I don't know how I can assist them. Assist them. But rest assured, I will post the notes. There will be study notes in my website. If you don't have the internet at home or on your phone, you don't have data. I know that some of you don't have data. Well, we can't help it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. Uh, from my videos, then you'll get more and more and more and more. I am prepared to do it. It's not about money. No, it's about supporting you, young people, so that you are what you want to be. Thank you very much.